And then I also have, uh oh, I have so much lotion on my hands. <laughs> I can barely open things. Oh no, fam. Oh, this is bad. What's up guys, welcome back. So today, it is the end of November, it is the beginning of December, and that means it's time for my monthly favorites, my November monthly favorites. I took a funny approach, sort of accidentally, this month, and that was that a lot of this stuff ended up being combos. I'm like looking at it right now. It's like not just one thing, it's I liked how these things went together, and so a lot of the stuff will be like that. I've got everything from skincare, to makeup, to candles, to media, things I absorbed with my eyeballs, you guys, know how favorites work. Let's go ahead and jump in. <laughs> Let's start with skincare. So I quit breastfeeding recently. Uh, you can tell by the absolute state of my nails. I have not had my nails in this bad of shape in years. I can't remember. They're painfully short. They are breaking off. They're bending back. I won't get into it. Regardless, my hormones have been freaking out. My face is really broken out and the other thing that happened was my chest and my neck got so dry that it felt like I was back in my first trimester. No, first trimester I was oily. My second trimester again, where it was almost to the point of KP, where it was, I mean, it was so itchy that I would wake up in the middle of the night and my neck felt like it was cracking and I had to, it was just, it was awful. I was like putting hand cream on my neck in the middle of the night. So I did what any normal human being would do in 2020. And I Googled most moisturizing face lotion, basically. I actually just typed in most moisturizing and I let Google finish it. And this was what came up. Look, people have their opinions on the cruelty-free status of first aid beauty. I'm not in the mood, okay? It has already been a long week and it's only Tuesday. This is the Ultra Repair Cream Intense Hydration Skin Protected with Colloidal Oatmeal. It comes in tons of sizes. That is the marker to me of a product that is a cult favorite when, yes, it comes in a tube if you'd like to try it like a normal person, but it also comes in a vat because it's, it's that good. And the thing that surprised me the most about this, it being a very, very moisturizing formula, is actually, that it's not crazy heavy. It's not lipidy feeling. You know what lipids are? Lipids are fats. You know, it doesn't feel greasy. It's actually whipped. The texture of it's whipped. It almost feels like one of those whipped face cleansers. Have you ever used one of those? I don't know. It reminds me of something and I can't put my finger on it, but as it smooths out, it really, really nourishes your skin and then it actually locks it in without being too occlusive, but it definitely has a barrier when it dries down. It doesn't have any added fragrance or added anything really to it, anything unnecessary, no color or anything. And it doesn't really smell like anything on its own. I mean, it has kind of a pleasant, it doesn't smell like much. I found it to be very uncomplaining. You guys heard me in my Good Molecules video. Skincare is something I like to solve. I want to find my holy grails and I want to stick with them. And this was a new need in my life, something that could quench my skin to such an extent that I felt winter proof, I felt hormone proof. And this has been giving me all of that. It feels as light as water on my skin, but it truly, truly works. And like I said, this is a combo favorites. And so the combo that I've been using it with is the Iconolab Renewal Face Oil. And this is definitely an oldie, but a goodie. I've been using this for years, but this combo right here, I use my active, whatever active I'm using that day for like anti-aging or brightening or whatever. And then this, and then this, and it is my moisture cocoon for moisture cocoon season. You know, I miss Ingrid, I do. She was the one who coined the term moisture cocoon for me, Ingrid Nelson, but, but a personal love letter directly to me. She didn't know she did it, but she did. She is actually on her second act here and she is starting a candle company called The New Savant. We're gonna talk about candles in this video, but I don't have to tell you guys how much I love candles, how exciting I think candles are. I can pretty much get excited about trying any candle. So I will be finger on the buzzer when she does drop some scents. I really wanna be able to review those for you guys. That's a sidebar, but I love candles. Anyway, these two things together, oh my gosh, big game changer for my skin because it was a dire, dire situation. Now we just have to figure out what the heck I'm gonna do about my nails. Fortunately, my hair hasn't fallen out yet, so that's good. I don't know, fingers crossed guys, knock on wood. Okay, let's talk hand care, since I just put that all over my hands. This is funny. This is something that Thrive sent me. Actually, they sent them to me separately, but 
2020 turned me into a hand sanitizer person and then it turned me into a hand cream person. And Thrive has put out two very excellent ones. Is this anything to write home about? Not necessarily. I mean, it's a hand sanitizer. I have waxed poetic about the difference between hand sanitizers. There are the like isopropyl alcohol based ones that smell like a doctor's office. And then there are like the vodka based ones. This one is ethyl alcohol based and it doesn't have any real smell to it. It doesn't have a scent added to it as far as I can tell, but it doesn't have either the rubbing alcohol smell or the vodka smell, which is great because I don't know about you guys, but the refi refineries, is that what you would call it? Bre it's not a brewery. Regardless, the vodka factories in my local area, Tito's is here and things like that. Tito's started putting out hand sanitizer around when we were all running out of PPE in the beginning of the crisis. And so you'd go to some place and you would use their hand sanitizer and you'd run and you'd be like, Oh no, <laughs> it smells like a hangover. And uh, I'm really glad that it doesn't smell like vodka. It's the little things. But the next thing, and again, I mean, I was the person years ago, or even just prior to 2020, who complained about lotion on my hands. I was like, ugh, I hate the feeling of lotion on my hands. It's so gross. I'd rather have my hands crack and dry than wear lotion on my hands. Well, a lot of things have changed this year and I have become a hand cream person and this is the hand cream for me. So this is the Defying Gravity Nourishing Hand and Nail Cream. Again, hoping on hope that this does anything for my nails other than just me needing to grow them out. But it is super nourishing because as you guys know, if you are participating in our common good and using hand sanitizer and washing my hand, Hmm. and washing your hands all the time, <laughs> then your hands dry out a lot. They just do. And so I have loved putting this on before bed, during the day, things like that. But yes, this is an epic little combo. Do you need to buy these things directly from Thrive Cosmetics? Not necessarily, but your bucks are going towards helping women thrive. It's always a good cause. And while this is unremarkable because I would rather a hand sanitizer be unremarkable. I don't want to notice it. This is pretty remarkable. I should actually show it to you, huh? I was about to show it to you and then I was like, I have lotion on my hands. It's like, yeah, you just put lotion on your hands. This is actually pretty, I think it's kind of dimethicone based. It's definitely got a little bit of a matteness to it. And when it, ooh, yes. Mm. When I say that I was spreading hand cream on my neck in the middle of the night. This is the hand cream I was spreading on my neck in the middle of the night before I discovered the ultra repair cream. This does have a smell. Mmm, mmm. It is lightly citrus and that is just one of my favorite smells in the whole world. I think citrus is just an agreeable unisex kind of smell and I like it very, very much and now my hands are extremely moisturized. <laughs> Let's just put some greasy fingerprints all over some more products, shall we? Okay, next makeup. This is something that you guys have been asking me about recently because it's the combo I've been wearing in like my past three or four videos and y'all are like, what's on your face? It is this. This, we'll start with this. This is the Arrive Skin Boost Perfecting Tint. This is something that I just kind of skipped over after I reviewed it because I was afraid of really talking up a foundation with such a small shade range, but it has what has become known to me as an expansive shade range. This is the only light shade. It doesn't have a whole bunch of white and then a couple of brown shades. It has, you know, a light shade, a medium shade, a brown shade, a deep shade, and a dark shade or something like that. Was that six? Was that five? I think it has five. And so while they do ultimately probably need to expand their shade range for undertones and whatnot, it's an equal opportunity shade range. But the reason that I rediscovered this was because as I have been talking about a lot lately, I decided to actually organize my makeup recently. I bought storage and put things in individual drawers where I could find them and see them all at once. And I was like, why did I forget about that? The thing that I love about this is that it is actually skin finish. A lot of times we talk about foundations that are skin finish and there'll be a skin tint and they won't really dry down. They'll just add a really nice dewiness or we'll be talking about a foundation and it will end up a little bit too matte or powdered down looking or just cakey looking. This is a crazy formula. It's so beautiful. I'm not sure if this has silicones in it or what, but the texture that it leaves on my skin is just unbelievable. And the thing that I have been using it with, another oldie but a goodie, but I haven't used it in a while, is the Kosa's Revealer Concealer. And the reason that I started using this again is because I was getting really frustrated with all of my concealers that I had purchased in too light of a shade. Just thinking, oh, concealer should always be brightening. No. And if it's too light, it was making my under eyes look really gray. 
This, granted, we're not getting perfect, perfect coverage. I kind of went in on my eyeshadow today, and so I feel like I kind of rubbed some of it off, but I would rather it look like that than over brightened and at the end of the day look kind of crepey and gross. This is beautiful. And unfortunately, their shade range is not epic. And I say that being a person who, you know, this is the lightest shade and it's still skin, like just skin color, not brightening on me. The big complaint that I hear about this range is not that it's incomplete as much as it all kind of skews yellow. And so I would shade this recommendation uh, with that caveat, maybe go swatch it in store, see if it works for you. But this formula is really, really beautiful. And I think that this combo is just so awesome together. They just really give me the skin finish that I've been looking for in pursuit of for so long. The perfect medium coverage, the perfect skin finish, and it actually wears all day without powder. It's Yes. Ooh, actually, also, I wanted to mention, I'm thinking about becoming one of those influencers who does Project Pan videos. I like watching them. I watched the first one, I don't know, a few weeks ago, and I was like, oh, this is actually pretty fun. Y'all let me know your favorite people who do Project Pan videos and maybe a good resource on where to start because I don't know how to start a Project Pan. Like, I want to do it right and I want to pay homage to whoever invented it, so let me know. Okay, the next makeup thing is a lot of things and that is green eyeshadow. It's something that has emerged organically in my videos recently where I was like, I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna try something new. And I ended up realizing how many green eyeshadows I have in my collection. So the one that I'm wearing right now is actually from the No BS palette, the original No BS palette from like two years ago from PYT. And this is this green shade right here. And it's just, so pretty, I like it so much. I love their formula. This is the ultimate beginner formula. So easy to work with. I also absolutely adore and need to do a full video for you guys, including this one from Aether. This is one of their new quads. This is the Topaz Mini Crystal Palette, and this is the shade Cosmic Awareness. This green right here, absolutely gorgeous. This is a highly concentrated and condensed color story that is so beautiful. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do like a full face of Aether. I also got a new code. I have the best discount on the internet now. It's 20% off. I didn't talk about it during Black Friday because Black Friday, well, you got 30% off on her website, so it's really no point. But I am gonna change my codes underneath my videos and everything so that everybody knows. But yeah, it's now Hey Khaki instead of Khaki and it's 20% off instead of 15. You're welcome. The next green I should I should just be swatching these, huh? I should be swatching these, huh? I think what I'm afraid of is that they're all gonna be identical and I'm gonna look like a fool. Ew, ooh. That's the green from Aether. It's almost, we talked about this before, it's more of a patina gold. <laughs> it's just such a pretty color. Come on. Wowzers. Mm. Her stuff is sometimes it looks a little bit inaccessible because you're like, is that going to look good on me? But man, she does the work up front on making the shades just look so incredible on the skin. It's crazy. And then I also have, uh oh, I have so much lotion on my hands. <laughs> I can barely open things. Oh no, fam. Oh, this is bad. This went under the radar because I don't really feel like that video, I don't think I packaged that video very well. It was like a new brands to my channel video. This is the Huda Khaki Haze palette. This is my first Huda palette ever. And it came with two greens in it. Wow! Oh my gosh. So when I say green, you guys know I mean olive green. Khaki, let's be real. My hands are so greasy. <laughs> with way too much lotion on. But those are the matte and the shimmer green from the Khaki Haze palette. Again, these don't look green, but they look green in the palette. And when they go on, I feel like they just, they pop on brown eyes. And honestly, it's always been pretty unexciting having brown eyes my entire life. And so I'm excited to have a shade that makes me excited about having brown eyes. Oh, and then finally, at Forest Sight. Of course, there are several greens in this one, but we just reviewed this in my last video. This is the new Raw Beauty Christie palette, and I will do, these are definitely different. So this is a taupe that shifts green. It's the shade Evergreen. And then this is Fiddlehead, which is more of, I would say, what would you call that? A fern green, like a fiddlehead fern. Funny how that works out, but, oh, 
can I have all like that just in a palette? Can we just have a green? Mm, it's yummy. It's really, really yummy. And I am proud to be overcoming my fears because I would say that green, if you would have asked me six months ago, can you wear green? I would have been like, mm -mm, you know, in makeup, I would have been like, absolutely not. But uh, I can, I can say, I have found a collection of greens that I absolutely love. You can't go wrong with any of these. They're all different price points too. Also, they're gonna be restocking the At Forest site on December 11th. Okay, let's talk about a find really fast. I just wanted to let you guys, ouch, dang it. I'm so used to being able to use my nails and I just can't. I wanted you guys to know I have this. This will probably be my next video once I get a chance to try and get my head around it. But this is the, oh my God, that's my first time opening it. Huh, this is the new M Cosmetics Divine Skies eyeshadow palette. It's like she heard us, guys. Everybody was like, man, this formula is great, but really there's only one colorway and it doesn't work for everybody kind of thing. She put this out in the Faded Clementine colorway. She works in these great color story collection sort of capsules. Boy, is that pretty. Mm, you're just gonna have to tune in to watch me swatch these and put them on my eyeballs. But this is definitely geared more towards deeper skin tones with the, the just the intensity of the shades. And also orange is not always my color, but there's not too much like orange orange in this. It's more of like a soft corally orange. And then there's this, uh, well, there's these two. I don't know. We're just gonna have to see how they work. I tried the lip cushion that came with it last night and I was like, okay, we're gonna have to try some tricks to get orange to work on me. But Michelle Fawn has a way, she just has a way of making me like colors that I don't always like on me. She just gets it. She gets undertones. She gets what looks good on skin. She's like that chef that you're like, I don't like anchovies. And then you're like, well, I, 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 like, I like these anchovies, you know? So look forward to this. It's not obviously a favorite yet. It's a find, but I just wanna let you guys know that that is coming. Okay, let's talk about some candles because you guys have actually been asking me about following up on the other land candles. And I also wanted to provide you guys my like tippy top seasonal favorites. So this is almost a fail actually. This is the sh shade. This is actually not what I meant to grab. This one's black velvet. This one's actually totally lovely. I really like this one. This is one of Otherland's holiday scents that they released. It doesn't strike me as particularly holiday though, but it's really, really nice. But no, it is actually Fallen Fur was the one that I meant to bring up here with me. They sent me two and they came in the most gorgeous gift boxes. Actually, I have one right here. <laughs> I brought them up here on purpose. Come on, come on. Look at this. It's magnetized and then it opens up and then it's like this, and then the candle is inside. And it comes, I didn't bring them up here, with the cutest set of matches in this beautiful matte black box with like embossed gold on it. I'll have to stick a photo in. Oh my goodness, this is such a gift. Like it's so gift worthy. But I wanted to provide as good of a review as I could, not necessarily a binary good or bad, but letting you guys know what to expect with these fragrances, especially if you're thinking about buying them as a gift. So black velvet smells, it just smells floral. It's really, really nice, kind of lily of the valley kind of smell. Did I get soot on me? They, they recommend trimming the wick every time that you light one of these or every time you blow it out because they have, I think that this is the science behind it, just very luxurious, oils in them and it tends to build up on the end of the wick and then when you light it the flame will be really tall and smoky and so they really want to make it so that you don't have to deal with that so they do always recommend trimming the wick but the other one fallen fur I mean, it looks just like this it would just have fallen fur written right here on it but uh, I have st I've studied the fragrance I have my thoughts together on it and I thought that it was going to be very evergreen smelling I thought it was going to be like a light balsam kind of thing the thing that I feel feel like I need to make anyone aware of with other land candles is that they are luxury fragrances. To me, that means diptyque. Do you ever smell diptyque candles? And I feel like sometimes diptyque kind of overdoes it with the notes or overdoes it with the base notes in a lot of cases. A viewer messaged me the other day, who is a longtime viewer, someone who I absolutely love, always love her comments. And she asked me, which one of the other land candles she should go with. And I said, what are your preferred fragrances? And she's like, I love bakery smells and you know, cupcakes and vanilla. And, and I was like, don't buy other land candles. 
that's not what they do. That's not where they excel. The way I put it to her was their fragrances are highbrow. <laughs> They're up there with like the Fleur candles or like I said, Diptyque candles. And I compared the Mountain Lace with uh, Byredo Burning Rose, which Byredo also is one of those like very, very complex, very expensive. These candles smell expensive. That's what I'm trying to say. Luxurious, expensive, not always my thing, I should say, because I'm not a big fan of cedar, amber, woody base notes. And there are cedar, amber, woody base notes in a lot of their candles, not all of them, but definitely Fallen Fur. That's the reason that I don't love that one is just because I light it and my husband's like, whoa. And if I could compare it to anything, guys, it smells for memory, almost exactly like dead ringer for Diptyque Patchouli. So the, the only reason that I know what Diptyque Patchouli smells like is because my very good friend Genevieve, who was on my channel uh, back in 2018, we love her. She d drives tour buses. She used to drive tour buses for a living. She's incredible. And she drove Ellen DeGeneres on tour and Ellen DeGeneres absolutely insisted on having her bus full of these diptyque patchouli candles. And she only ended up burning them a little bit. And so Genevieve just brought them all home and gave them to her bougiest friend being me. And I just, I had like three half burned diptyque patchouli candles. That is a ridiculous story. What a, what a weird situation. But anyway, that smell while lovely is a lot and not necessarily my first choice, but Allow me to offer you an alternative. Wow. Wow. I lit this, I think the first time, maybe like the week of Thanksgiving. I was just like, well, I'm gonna go ahead and ring in the Christmas time. And we've already burned this much of it. I have the very, very large size of the Nest holiday candle that you guys saw. It's still out in my living room. This, I should have gotten in that size. This is birch wood pine. This is so good. This is everything. This is the Christmas time balsam fir tree evergreen scent of dreams without being too creamy, without being too Bath and Body Works, although their balsam candle is pretty good at Bath and Body Works. They're just not cruelty free. Oh man, this is this is just everything. And you know, we went and actually got a real Christmas tree and put that up over the weekend. And so it's like, I burn this and then I have the actual Christmas tree and I can just sit there and sort of bask in the vibes, I guess you would say. My mother-in-law sent us a gift basket for our anniversary that had a bottle of Veuve Clicquot champagne in it that we just got around to opening on uh, Thanksgiving. And so it was like this, the Christmas tree, the Veuve, the pecan pie, the, God help us, my husband just keeps buying that white chocolate peppermint bark. I'm gonna be as big as a house. But anyway, it was a full Christmas experience. <laughs> We're really embracing it. And this is, I seriously, I will know better next year to buy this in the largest size that they make. All right, let's talk fashion real quick. I'm not gonna say I didn't buy anything on Black Friday, but some of it hasn't come yet. But I did say, in my anti-haul that I have been trying to distill my style down and be more of an adult about the things that I buy because I tend to change my mind and my aesthetic too much. I go on Pinterest and I'm like, oh my God, she looks so cute. I'm gonna shop for that item until I find the perfect one. And then I get it and I realize eh, it would have looked good on me if I had that girl's entire wardrobe and her style. I need to kind of like follow my own heart, I guess. And you guys also know, to give context, that Baldwin Denim, my favorite freaking company that I loved to spend way too much money on, you know, luxury basics at, they closed down at the beginning of the crisis because of just financial issues and things like that. We go way back. I love them so much, but they are unfortunately no longer a thing. And so I have been looking for a new luxury basics company to spend all of my money at. And I think that I have found it. It is the company Air, A-Y-R. This shirt is from them. It is just this really great, like oversized menswear sort of white shirt, super classic, amazing cut. The stripy shirt that I was wearing in my anti-haul, oh, it's called the French fry. I also have that blue dress that you guys have seen. You probably don't know it's a dress because you only see me from the shoulders up, but it's that like bright turquoise blue and white uh, vertical stripe dress. Love 
love that, wore that while I was pregnant. And it's just, I love how kind of like oversized all their stuff is. It looks so chic in that respect. Some of their stuff's crazy off the charts expensive. Like I'm not paying $400 for a sweater, but like this was like $135. That's a lot of money. But that's what I mean when I say I need to decide on my style so that I can invest in the pieces that are gonna last a long time instead of kind of constantly waffling back and forth as to what I like to wear. And I love how classic and timeless their pieces are. The striped shirt is so comfortable. I want it in every color. I think it just looks so stinking cute. I love that dress. I wear it all the time. And they actually started out, I believe, as like a denim company, as a jeans company. And so once I reach what I think of as like my equilibrium weight after pregnancy, like I still don't know what my natural waist size is going to be once I you know, stabilize. It's only been eight weeks. I'm going to probably buy some jeans from them, but I don't want to invest in that just yet, obviously, for obvious reasons. But that has become my new spend way too much money resource. I know that for a lot of you guys, you're like, I don't care, but a lot of people do. A lot of people are like, Khaki, what is your new fashion vice? You know, that's my new fashion vice. And I will say, I don't talk about fashion on my channel that often anymore for a couple of very good reasons. One, I don't have to think about companies that are size inclusive when it comes to buying my clothes. I've always just been, you know, easy to straight sizes to fit. And so I don't always shop at companies that have extended sizes. Often I tend to go for smaller brands, indie brands, sustainable brands, and for whatever reason, stupid reasons, for no really good reason, they tend to almost be mutually exclusive to have a brand that is, you know, small and Indian doing things right versus size inclusivity. And then you end up with the size inclusive brands tending to be the H&Ms of the world. And then you end up with the sustainability police and, you know, fast fashion, X, Y, and Z. And so it's a conversation that's really hard to have on my channel. And I've kind of just always wanted to keep fashion as my own happy little thing because I don't obey any rules all the time when it comes to buying. Sometimes I buy acrylic sweaters for $30 from ASOS and I understand there's microplastics associated with that and I just don't want the microplastics police in my comments all the time. There's just a lot to handle and so I say that with like 50 caveats, I've just been enjoying this company air. That's, that's all I got. <laughs> okay, the next thing, and this is something that is incredibly exciting. If you watch my vlog channel, you have already seen this, but my husband came up to me basically in the middle of, you know, whatever anxiety crisis I was having right after I had gave birth because, oh boy, anyway, I won't get into that. And it was just this like moment of levity. He was like, hey, I wanna get you a push present, but I know that you're really specific. Can you pick something out? And I was like, yeah. I can do that. And so what I ended up getting is this ring right here. And of course it's got lotion all over it right now. So it's not very shiny, but it has my son's initials inscribed in it. And I think that typically the middle initial is your last name, but we, we ended up going with his middle name in the middle. I just think that SHC looks really pretty like that. This one is not, is not real gold, that's just costume. But this is, it's uh, it's 18 karat and I got it from a company called Kin Studio, K-I-N-N. -N. I looked around for a long time. You know, my wedding ring is from Tiffany because I am super allergic to things. And so they have hypoallergenic jewelry. I've thought I only could shop at places like Cartier or, or Tiffany or something like that uh, because nickel tends to break me out. And you know, I don't wear these kinds of things for very long. And so that's why they don't break me out either. But for things that are going to really stay on my body, I want a good, you know, as pure of gold as I can get. So they agreed to go with 18 karat for me and they custom made this for me uh, so that it wouldn't make my skin reactive because not only am I allergic, I also have psoriasis and it's just constantly inviting havoc into my life with the water that gets caught under things. But regardless, this is absolutely beautiful. It has not broken my skin out and uh, it is it is like my favorite thing. Every time I look down at it, it is so pretty and I love repping my little son. Okay, one final thing that is super weird and random before I talk about media, things that I have been absorbing with my face. I never thought that I would become this person. Again, this is not news to you if you watch my vlog channel, but regardless, <sighs> Daily Harvest, I became a Daily Harvest person. Everybody's sponsored by Daily Harvest. I made my first order without even using one of those, you know, a million percent off codes that every influencer has. 
I paid full price for it like an idiot. I didn't care. I was just not eating right. I was so busy with my baby and with work and everything like that and so overwhelmed that I would literally just reach practically dinner time and be so exhausted and so hungry and realize that I hadn't eaten all day. And also I was breastfeeding at the time and realized that, wow, my breast milk can't really be very high quality right now if I'm not eating anything. And if I am, it's like a handful of potato chips I'm stuffing in my mouth, like that's not okay. And so I did what I thought I would never do and I ordered a delivery of smoothies and flatbreads and oat bowls and harvest bowls and they're great. And the smoothies are the best part. I feel like they've iterated a lot on everything else, but the smoothies are so good, so good. I love them so much and it has truly changed not just my habits and my my life, but like my happiness because it's just one fewer thing I have to think about. I used to be such a cynic about this stuff. In fact, I posted a video a while ago uh, of this guy basically just bagging on Daily Harvest and how dumb of an investment it was because you could do it yourself and most blender attachments fit onto jar. I mean, he went all, all in and it, he made great points. He did. He did not have a newborn, okay? And that is the one you know, gigantic constant in my life right now that is non-negotiable. And so I have had to make adjustments in other parts of my life. And if you are in that boat as well, I would highly recommend it. I think that there are other companies out there that do the same thing, but I gotta tell you, the smoothies are great. So I don't have a sponsorship or anything. I just have my referral thing down there for $25 off. You get $25 off, I get $25 off. It, anybody can do that. But uh, that's underneath all of my videos now, just in case you're interested, but I cannot say enough about it, and I'm actually eating healthy now. <laughs> okay, two things, and one of them's a combo. So I've had this date with my son on Fridays for like the last mm, eight weeks, I would say. You guys know what I'm talking about? So Fridays are when The Great British Baking Show hits Netflix, and it was my four o'clock appointment with my little man, and I would sit down with him after the nanny left, by the way, my nanny quit via text message in the middle of the night on Sunday night. I am without a nanny now. Yesterday was rough. Yesterday was rough. Anyway, the new season is starting this Friday of their, hol their holiday episodes. I love the holidays, but it's only, I think it's only four episodes, but it's, oh, it's so good. I mean, Br British Baking Show plus Christmas. It's just a treat for the senses, but <laughs> When Daniel Sandler sent that whole package of British goodies for us to try, it was tea, it was coffee, and it was biscuits. And I couldn't eat the biscuits because they were not gluten-free. So I went to the store and I tried a couple of different gluten-free shortbread biscuits and cookies. They're called cookies here. One that I tried from the brand Char was just abysmally awful. It was what you would think of if you think of gluten-free food, where you're just like, oh, this uh, actually breaks down in water. <laughs> this is a water soluble food. It was not okay. This is an empty box of Walker's gluten-free pure butter shortbread. Whole oh, fam. <laughs> this is next level. Do you guys remember? Okay. So like your teachers would store things in those circular tins with the different shaped cookies all over them, the shortbread cookies, and they all had, you know, and you would always hope that when you open them, there would be cookies inside and there never were. They were always storing like markers in there or something like that. But those cookies, when you could finally have them, if someone actually had a brand new tin of them, oh, they were so good. They were so good. These taste like that. Was that a really esoteric reference? I think that it was, but I think that some of you guys are gonna get me. Either way, unbelievably good, and it has been my date with my son and my combo to myself. The shortbread cookies, Great British Baking Show, and a cup of peppermint tea, which is the only tea I really like. And that has been just, just sending me, you know, right into the weekend. So lovely. Oh, I want to do a little honorable mention real quick. This was sent to me by one Lona, my uh, one of my viewers who has become a friend. This is a Duke's mayonnaise pin, okay? And this has become more than just a mayonnaise. It's always been more than just a mayonnaise, but you know, sub Southern people know that this is like the mayonnaise of life. And if you're like, Kaki, why are you talking about mayonnaise? Duke's is just like that. It's this cult thing. And recently I saw on Amanda Z's stories, she was like, actually we are a Duke's household. And she was just talking about her mayonnaise and she's up in Maryland. And I was just like, okay. And I messaged her and I was like, we have a lot in common. We need to talk about mayonnaise. And then Buffalo Beauty Boy, who you should also go follow because he's freaking adorable. 
he messages me and he's like, I can't get that where I am. And I was like, order it on Amazon because that's what Lona did too. She's on the West Coast and she couldn't get it. And I was like, guys, they sell Duke's mayonnaise on Amazon. And he just posted on his stories and tagged me and Amanda. And he's just like, y'all, I got, I have secured the bag. <laughs> so um, if you are a Duke's mayonnaise person, holler down below, you know who you are. And in fact, he put the um, acronym for if you know, you know, because it's just everything. So yeah, thank you, Lona, for this. I will cherish it forever. And finally, in the spirit of British things, we are super late to the party, but we just started watching The Crown. Oh my gosh, why have I not been watching this show? I love unnecessarily luxurious things and I have never seen anything as ridiculous, but also as like so Salinger-esque of just being like poor little rich girl. It sings straight to my soul. I don't know why I love watching that kind of stuff, but I'm obviously not alone. So The Crown is all about the royal family. And I personally never really understood the significance of the royal family within context. I was always like, well, they're imperialists, they colonize things, and they're just kind of a holdover from the past. But they see themselves as this aspirational, idealism is that did I just make a sentence that makes British people quote unquote better people because they have something to look to that is perfect and without opinion Base that's a horrible way of I, I don't think I did a very good job of explaining that, but you guys know what I mean. I don't think I'm offending the royal family. They don't care. It starts with Elizabeth and Philip young, and they're on safari, oh my gosh, and the wardrobe, it's just everything safari in the 50s. It was just, anyway, it was like a Ralph Lauren fever dream. But I have loved the way that they portrayed the plot lines and the way that they humanize all the characters. And I know that everybody else is way further along because I think there are four seasons and we've only watched one and a half so far. So I'm really excited to get into the Diana episodes and everything, but even so far, I mean, it is just, it's awesome because it's all of the, the lavish, just completely unnecessary nonsense that I love watching in a TV show, but my husband is a history buff. He loves all of the, just the timeline of it all. You know, he loves learning about that kind of stuff. And so it is like the perfect meeting of our interests. I have just been greatly enjoying The Crown. Let me know if you are also a fan of The Crown. No spoilers. I mean, it's historical, but still, I don't know everything that happened. So anyway, guys, those are all of my favorites for November. The next favorites is going to be my year-end favorites. We're going to do the same thing that we have done the past few years, except this year it won't just purely be clean beauty. And that is going to be a big fails video and a big best of the best video at the very end of the month, very end of the year. So stay tuned for that. But we have a lot of fun stuff to catch up on in between there. A lot of new things, a lot of things that I'm excited to show you guys again. And then we are going to hop into a no buy in January. You guys seemed really, really into that idea. And again, let me know your favorite channels and resources and whatnot. I asked on Instagram already, but if you guys aren't on there, let me know what your favorite resources are for starting a Project Pan series because I want to do it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you guys had a lovely month. Uh, if you did enjoy this, do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.